Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for inviting me to present here at the All Hands Workshop for um, Neotoma. Uh, my name's Simon Haveley, and I'm uh, of the Australian National University and uh, working on the Indo Pacific Pollen Database, the IPPT. And I'm presenting here today from the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples, First Nations peoples of the Canberra region um, in Southeast Australia. And it's great to be here to present um, alongside Annika Herbert, who's can't be with us uh, at the moment as she's on maternity leave, but Annika's played a major role in developing um, the IPPD over the last couple of years. So uh, some of the recent activities and accomplishments, what we've seen um, over the last two to three years, we've been able to bring together some of the community here to um, build capacity in terms of using Tilia and Neotoma and different um, data analytical packages associated with that at workshops in uh, 2020, um, essentially uh, aimed at um, building that capacity uh, and also uh, bringing in international partners in 2021, particularly University of Bergen, uh, the IHOPE group, and Wisconsin, Jack Williams, um, uh, collaborating with these groups to, to bring together um, the data we have and help uh, to upload this material to Neotoma. Uh, as part of that, we've been also applying for a number of uh, research grants, including Australian Research Data Commons organization, which is providing funding for databases initiative here in Australia. We've had one uh, go up an application in 2021 that was unsuccessful, but certainly we'll be reapplying uh, next year. Um, a lot of work's been done in the harmonization space. Annika has been working very hard on that in the last year or so, and uh, that has been able to be funded through a Australian Research Council Centre of Excellence, of which I'm part of, um, and this is a uh, postdoc uh, for Annika to actually uh, develop some of the database uh, data uh, from uh, the Australasian region, uh, essentially Australia, New Guinea, the Pacific region. Uh, Annika's put a lot of effort over the last few years in uh, bringing that data together, along with um, really the founder of this work, uh, Jeff Hope, Alongside Eric Grimm, who um, uh, started uh, the IPPD uh, over uh, three decades ago, essentially now, and a uh, really important initiative that uh, uh, has helped our community of the region in terms of bringing together uh, unified data sets in the paleontological space. Uh, we've been presenting work on this over the last few years, uh, particularly Eric Grimm's memorial, of course. April 2021, uh, but also at our regular Australasian Fraternity Association meetings, most recent one in November 2022 in Adelaide, and we'll be presenting some of this work. Annika uh, will be able to present that uh, work at Inqua in Rome in uh, July of this year as well. So, what we've been able to achieve so far has been uh, uh, quite a uh, step change in terms of. Um, what was available maybe uh, three to four years ago. Um, so the, right now we have uh, 84 sites uh, across the region, large number of samples, obviously uh, taxa uh, as well. This uh, task of harmonizing the tax list has been a major um, part of the work we've done in the last uh, 18 months or so. Uh, and it has uh, expertise driving that. Um, over the last year, we've been able to add uh, around 30 sites um, to clean up a lot of those a day as well. But as you'll see from the map, this is a region that's um, really uh, biodiverse, it's uh, temperate to tropical, and across a range of um, uh, countries in the Indo Pacific region. And it's, uh, just because of its location, it's obviously highly diverse in terms of the potential taxa to be involved. So it's been a major part of the work that we've been doing. So what's coming next, certainly um, we'll be adding many more sites and it this gives you a sense of the progress over the last few years and uh, hopefully that, that increase um, in the 
number of sites being added will continue, uh, particularly in the next two to three years. Um, we have funding for Annika to continue this work um, over that time, and, and we certainly hope to achieve what we're indicating there um, in the number of sites to be uploaded in total. It's around 280 sites, and um, by that time, it'll be around 300. We have to, uh, to give it to the system by 2025. But really, uh, this, many of much of this work couldn't have been achieved without some of the support we've had from the Australian Research Council and the Centre of, of Excellence programs. And I'm fortunate to be part of the Centre of Excellence for Australian Biodiversity and Heritage, Bar, which has uh, been able to fund a number of these initiatives here in Australia, including the legacy work that uh, and, uh, Annika has been involved with. Uh, and this will continue, fortunately, with the a new centre of excellence. As the bar concludes next year, a new centre of, centre of excellence for Indigenous environmental histories and futures will begin in 2024. And this is an Indigenous led um, centre of excellence and uh, will be a critical development here in Australia for uh, uh, appropriate time. Uh, and uh, New initiatives uh, in collaboration with the Indigenous communities with paleontological and biological uh, realm. And of course, we'll be uh, working with other organisations, as I mentioned, the Australian Research Data Commons um, organisation for seeking further funding. Uh, and certainly rely on the Atoma expertise from the Atoma internationally for helping to. Um, Training stewards and uh, training on various data analysis packages uh, uh, for our library team members. But a key focus, I think, and I'm not interested in getting feedback in this meeting is a focus on First Nations intellectual property, IP, and data access protocols. It's a key part of our work with the new centre of excellence here, one that um, would be very interesting. In we have a discussion here at this meeting about what um, the Atoma uh, may be able to bring to the table in terms of um, useful and appropriate uh, tools and protocols for um, incorporating data that has significant service importance for First Nations communities, um, wherever they be. So, thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to the discussions over the next um, few days. Thank you. Okay, fantastic.